I'm really excited about uh, taking some time out and just kind of chopping it up with my nephew, Clinton Allen, about his debut concert and um, his future endeavors. And um, hey, his adventures and everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, who is the man behind the music? Well, um, you know, every time I'm, I get asked that question, um, I always imagine this uh, mirror and I see myself in the mirror and I see all of the good things about my life, but I also see uh, those flaws. So when people ask me that question, you know, it just gets a little weird because, you know, as a 37 year old man, I'm really still trying to figure out who I am. But if I would have to uh, make it a short, you know, quick little snippet, I would like to say, I'm just a country boy from North Carolina who's trying to share the message of love and light wherever social music is savoring. I love it. Yeah. Perfect answer. <laughs> Perfect answer. Um, who inspired you to make music? Uh, again, another uh, uh, interesting question because you're an artist, so I know you understand. Uh, I have a lot many different art artists that uh, have inspired me, that have influenced me. You know, I have these categories. I have my favorite vocalist, and then I have my favorite musicians, and then there, uh, there are artists whom I just like, uh, their branding and their marketing and how they uh, package themselves as an artist. But I, the one particular artist who I felt like every time I heard their music, I wanted to record was Sade. Really? Everything, every time I listen to her music, every time I listen uh, uh, the band, uh, uh, the presentation, the packaging, and how um, they were able to uh, sell and market a sound. They created their own sound, their own vibe, and they own that lane. And I respected how they were able to take that sound and to make it mainstream. Wow. And that's something that I aspire to do, to, to uh, own who I am as an artist and to share that with the world. Wow. Yeah. She's yeah. one of my favorite artists Absolutely. as well. But for some reason, I thought you would say uh, Luther. Oh, no. he's So he's in the category of my favorite uh, vocalist. So there's Got Luther. It. There's Peebo Bryson, who I feel like is the greatest male vocalist ever. There's Whitney Houston. You know, there's all these. I have favorite vocalists. But when we're talking about artists that made me want to record, there's Sade. There is uh, Fred Hammond. Wow. When we're talking about the gospel side. Um, and then there's also... Um, Robin Thicke, whom I just love the way they marketed themselves yeah. to the world. And so if you really think about it, them three right there, I pulled a little bit from each to create my sound and my vision and my brand. I love yeah. it. Yeah, I love it. So you're 37, right? Yes. Um, why did you wait so long to start your music career? Um, well, this is a little touchy subject for me. Um, so I know you've seen, have you ever seen the movie uh, Sister Act 2? I have. So there's this scene in Sister Act 2. Well, first of all, let me say this. Sister Act is definitely one of my favorite movies. It's a top five <laughs> movie for me. I can quote that movie from top to bottom. It's definitely one of those movies that had a major impact on me musically. Um, but there's a particular scene in that movie where Rita, who's the main main actress, her mother finds out that she's a part of this choir and she um, is about to go to this choir competition. And her mom basically gives her this lecture on how music and entertainment is not an option for her. Um, now, while my parents never told me I, could, I could, you know, couldn't sing, they never told me I couldn't be an artist or whatever, that mindset was definitely something that was very popular growing up where I grew up from. See, I grew up in a very rural area in North Carolina. And so being a singer, being an artist, just wasn't an option that parents were teaching their children. And you're talking about somebody who's been singing, who's been a part of music ever since I was a child. But it wasn't until I got an opportunity to uh, sing with uh, groups like Eddie Batchiff and Fulfillment. And then I started singing with Brent Jones. And I started getting these opportunities to do a lot of mainstream gigs. Um, that I realized, oh man, there are people here in California that are making six figures. You don't even know their names, but you can see them in the credits of movies. Or you can see them in the credits of uh, uh, doing TV, uh, film, get, you know, whatever, music, uh, but you don't know their names, but they're making a living off of being a musician, being a singer. And so, but I didn't realize this until my early thirties. Wow. So right before COVID, you know, I was doing all these different, opportunities and then COVID struck 
right? And so I had a, uh, I basically was, <laughs> uh, as the old people would say, I was met between a rock and a hard place because right. no more gigs were coming. And so I said, you know, let me just release some music. I got all these songs that I've written since I was five until an adult. I got all these songs that I've uh, produced myself. I got all these songs that I've uh, arranged vocally. Let me just start releasing the music uh, while I had this opportunity. Wow. So I sat home, I um, pulled out a song I've written in 2010, which is my first single, You're the One. And um, the song was already written. I just needed to refine it so it could sound like 2021 because that's the year that I released it so yeah um, it's just one of those things where when I was younger it just wasn't an option for me right you know? so what can your audience expect from your debut concert and that's gonna be February the 11th correct yes okay well let me first say I am a Christian artist I know when people first hear my music they hear the swing jazz, they hear the jazz standards, but the message at the core of it is Jesus. So I am a Christian artist. So at the foundation, my audience, they're going to experience Jesus. But what they're going to do is they're going to experience it the way that God gives it to me. You know, um, there's gospel music, there's traditional gospel music. There is uh, Southern gospel, you know, there's a CCM praise and worship. Um, but I want to create an experience where families can sit down and play music, or a couple can sit down and play the music while eating dinner right. during the holiday seasons. Or, you know, there, there might be a barbecue. You can, you can still play this music and have a good time, if you will. You know, it's just about creating a new experience. Uh, well, I wouldn't say new, because I'm definitely not a new, uh, the first uh, Christian jazz artist, nor am I the first Christian swing jazz artist or whatever, but it's just creating a different experience for the Christian. That's all. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, all right. I get it. I get it. Um, what is the one message that you would like to leave with your audience or your supporters? Um, at the end of the day, I want to leave this world with love. I do feel like uh, this world is, has become filled with a lot of hate, a lot of anger, a lot of jealousy, you know. And I think a lot of it has to do with social media. Yeah. Um, but I just want to leave the people with love. That's what I want my legacy to be. That's what I want to leave my children with. That's what I, I want to leave my wife with. But I want to leave my, uh, uh, the audience, the people that come to my concerts, the people that listen to my music. I want to leave them with love because um, I just personally believe that love's in need. 